So, moving on to some more news. Uh, this news is also sad, like the drama fever news we talked about. Apparently, Funimation and Crunchyroll are ending their partnership. Uh, I know that, you know, divorce rates are high in this country, but it's still really a sad thing to have happen to two people that we we love, we've been... Well, remember, corporations are apparently are people. So, apparently they're people. No, but uh, seriously, all jokes aside, this is actually really frustrating because uh, I don't. I think you have a Crunchyroll subscription, do you? I do. Yes. No. Okay. And I know some people that have. Actually, I can say this on air because uh, it's Deirdre. Deirdre, who's oh, actually, she's been unable to come on to those guys on the radio, but she uh, they've been on those guys play. Yeah. So that's fine. Uh, but Deirdre, uh, Deirdre has an account, and I think uh, someone else that she knows. I don't know if they share it or not. A Verve account, which Verve is. Uh, was Funimation, Crunchyroll, and plenty of other uh, networks as well coming together, like other animation services or animation yeah. companies bringing their episodes to the service as well. So it wasn't just anime. Uh, but yeah, Verve, which I never got on the Verve wagon, but if I wanted all my anime, if I lived alone and I was like, I just want my anime, I don't pay for cable, I'd get Verve because it's actually really cheap compared to getting Crunchyroll and Funimation on the side. Right. Um, and I'll go through the, the the price of the bundles a little bit later on as we're talking about this, but yeah, sadly, uh, Funimation and Verve, uh, Funimation and Crunchyroll, rather, do not have a partnership anymore, so that means that Funimation is actually pulling out of Verve. Yeah. Uh, the reason why mm -hmm. that is, is basically due to the fact that even though both companies said, hey, we're doing this amicably, and I don't think they've actually said why they're leaving, we can all easily suppose, this isn't one of those assumed things where like you make an ass out of you and me, this is an actual, like, under, it just is public knowledge that AT&T owns Otter Media, which yeah. Otter Media, a uh, subsidiary of Otter Media is Crunchyroll, and Sony bought Funimation. Although I think yeah. they bought, I don't know if Nav Navar or Navare Corporation, if they're still the, if Funimation's still a subsidiary of them, I forgot if they split a while ago. But the point though is, is that Sony owns Funimation, and I don't know if Sony wants to start their own streaming service, but still, yeah. I, I think I've heard rumblings, I don't know if it was in the article itself, but <laughs> we do know that Warner Media wants to start its own streaming service, we talked about that. Uh, during the drama fever story. So eventually they're going to come to a head and they're going to look at their subsidiaries, look at what they own, their chess pieces in the streaming game and go, wait, why are we working with the competition? Why are we working yeah. with the anime competition? And they're going to pull out of any agreements that they have. Now, we should note though, that while they're pulling out of Verve, any contracts that, have, that are already in place are going to be completed. Yeah. So that, and I don't know if any physical stuff, anything like Gintama or anything like that, if it would be smart for Sony to pull out or even AT&T to pull out. So I think when it comes to those, and this is just me fully speculating, I think we'll be fine for Gintama or anything physical in the future. It's... It, and I know that they said, hey, we're not going to be working together anymore, but I do think that maybe, maybe I'm just hoping, right? Maybe I'm just naive. I think that the physical aspect, because we don't have Crunchyroll as a physical distributor on their own, and Funimation, uh, obviously they distribute stuff on their own, but it's not like Sony is working on some bigger kind of distribution thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. they're giving money to Funimation, but I think that... It would be smart. At least I'll say that. I think it would be smart. If physically, they stayed together, but emotional, I'm kidding, but streaming-wise, they split. Because I get it. They both have streaming services, and they want to have, like, a Sony streaming service where the Funimation, it, it, would, be, it would be another Funimation channel, Tristan. Yeah. Essentially, on their streaming service. And then same thing for Warner Media. They'd have the Crunchyroll channel. Um, and, and I get it. I don't like it. I'm sure you don't like it either. I'm sure a lot of people out there are like, no, but uh, there are some people who normally I'd call them spoiled sports. I'd be like, come on, guys. But to be fair, there are people that understandably are like, well, we saw this coming because, yeah, yeah. like the second I heard Funimation owned or Sony owned Funimation, I was or rather put enough money into it that they seem to have an ownership stake in Funimation. I was like, yeah, what's what's going to happen with our baby country role? Yeah, what's gonna happen it, with our, yeah. It, it looks like. Um, in the article, they discussed that it was Funimation's decision due to its acquisition by Sony. Oh, did Fukunaga that... explain that directly? Yes, he did. Okay, 
He did. Um, and right. it looks like <laughs> so. It looks like Sony is kind of pushing forward the idea that they want Funimation to be uh, the quote here is a global sub and dub anime brand. So they probably want it to be. They, they like grow it into just as big as like Crunchy and have it be its own yeah. stand- um, streaming so, service, sub and dub mm-hmm. service, the whole shebang. Yeah, I don't think they'll do that, and that's nothing against Funimation because they always get the hits, and I love them to death. We grew up with Funimation, yeah. but the reason why I don't think that's the case is because there will always be some anime that mm-hmm. they will not be able to get. Yeah, and I don't think that. With a niche, even though we are growing as fans uh, in number, which is a beautiful thing, anime is still arguably niche in a sense. I know it's hit mainstream in many ways. There are people who have grown up with anime who are now in the NFL and you know in other uh, corporations as well. You have Elon Musk tweeting about anime. Not sure if he's just trying to get those likes and those hits. Um, because he said something recently, it wasn't about anime, but it was something he said about video games that was like, yo, what are you even talking about? Uh, like he just like Googled some names and then put them in like, oh, this is like this, but this is like this. And it was like, yo, I don't think you know what you're talking about, Elon Musk. But, uh, but, oh, but apparently he wants to invest in a giant robot (laughs) by, no, it's true. There's an article. I I scrapped it from the, from the episode, but there's an article on Anime News Network talking about how Elon Musk wants to make a giant robot. So maybe he's seen Gundam in passing. Uh, yeah, no, that, that's a real thing. Uh, so... But all jokes aside, though, uh, seriously, getting back on topic here, I don't know if they're going to be able to do that because there's always going to be something that's going to be missing that's going to make someone want to go, oh, let me go over to this service. And I feel like they should just work together in certain ways. Now, I'm not saying that they should cave. They should be like, oh, of course you should take this license. No, if they want to fight for a license, you fight for the license, right? Hey, we want this license over you. This is for uh, physical stuff. For streaming, I still think that licenses should be open to anyone. I'm not a big fan of the, we're going to pay so much money to just secure this license just for us. No one else can get it. It's like, well... Uh, uh, most of the time it ends up being like Amazon where you just overpay and it just, you're just stuck with, you, they could be great licenses, but like you're paying so much to outdo your competition that it's like, just don't. Now, if it's a physical thing, yeah, go, go, you know, go crazy if you need to. But I don't know. Do you see what I mean though, Tristan? I feel like working together in this industry with the amount of fans that are in it, even though yes, we're growing day by day still. I think it's better to work together to make an affordable product for the masses yeah. versus versus having people have to split their money between different services. And right. unlike other shows, like Netflix, perfect streaming network or perfect streaming service to go on and off where, oh, I'm going to spend like $12 this month on Netflix because the new season of Stranger Things came out. And then I'm not going to pay for it. You know, I'm not going to pay for Netflix. I'm not going to watch anything on Netflix for the next three months. But then, oh, Daredevil Season 3, so let me let me right. purchase that Netflix streaming uh, account again. Which you can do. You're not like trying to get free trials and game the system. You're just letting the subscription lapse and then signing up again. Anyone can do that. But in this case, though, with a, with a case of different shows like My Hero Academia, Attack on Titan, those are weekly. Mm. So there's the urge to keep on subscribing for every, you know, for different shows per season. Yeah. And there's, you know, X amount of shows coming out per core, per 13 episodes, per 26 episodes. So, yeah, I I mean, before I go on and on and on, because I can, (laughs) I can, uh, what's your take on this, Tristan? Do you think this is a good idea, bad idea? I mean, we saw it coming, but either way, what's your take? Yeah, I mean, it kind of felt inevitable. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I I'd kind of agree that it might still be the better idea to stick together. But I mean that's I mean, companies for you. Oh yeah, no, it's corporations just trying to, you know, secure their piece of the pie, if you will. I just don't think there will be a world where oh, Funimation is so big, it is the best and everyone loves it so much that Crunchyroll dies. It's like, no, Crunchyroll will have stuff that Funimation won't yeah, have, and vice versa. I feel like That's it would thing. be the other way around, if anything. But really? You think so? In think a sense of really? Funimation, like, keeping a streaming service. Oh, I'm sorry, you're referring to streaming. Okay. Yeah, no, they'll still put out anime. Like, that's yeah, never gonna... Yeah, yeah, I mean, okay. 
You don't think so? Yeah, yeah. Well, you don't think? No, 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 no. Because we were talking. Yeah, because in the context of one versus the other, duking it out, King Kong versus Godzilla it, on yeah. the streaming battle, you think Crunchyroll would would win? Yeah. So Crunchyroll would have run. the last. Crunchyroll in the long run would have the last roar. Yeah. Uh, and then for Funimation side of things. Yes, of course they're going to beat them out DVD wise because Crunchyroll has to work with other companies at this point. They work with Funimation, they've worked with uh, Sentai Filmworks, and they always, which is funny because they were working with Sentai Filmworks, then they dropped them or that partnership split up to work with Funimation, and now things have, the, the roles have uh, reversed yet again because guess what's joining Verve, Tristan? So we're losing Funimation, but guess what we're gaining? High dive. High Dive, that's right, High Dive. We talked about High Dive when it first appeared on the scene. Uh, we we are not working with High Dive. We want to let people know that because I'm sure somewhere down the line uh, people will one day be like, oh, are you guys getting some kind of like merch share or something or like anything like that? No, we're not. If we have any affiliate links, we have them listed down below. Yeah. And as of this recording, we're not working with High Dive. But I remember last time, Tristan, Balls you said... in your you court, High Dive. <laughs> Messages. What did you you said that about right stuff, didn't you? <laughs> the ball, but the ball is not in their court. We have to actually talk to them. And looking at our numbers, we're not there. But anyway, uh, no. But the thing with high dive that I find interesting is that's another thing as well to look at. Though with high dive, they seem to be going for a different type of clientele, a different type of anime fan that I don't think Funimation would ever cater to. Same thing with a, even though they don't have a streaming service, same thing with like a disco tech media. Even though Funimation is trying to go for some older stuff and do some feelers here and there, they're definitely doing that, don't get me wrong, but I would never see Funimation, and I hope that they would pick it up, but I would never see Funimation picking up Kamen Rider. Right. You know, that's not, or any other tokusatsu. They have the Garo anime, but you know who has the Garo live action tokusatsu series? High Dive. Because right. they're owned by Sentai Filmworks, and yeah. a subsidiary of Sentai Filmworks, or another film division, if you will, is Kraken Publishing, who released the Blu rays that I have in my collection. So, it's all like, you know, Garo. Um, even though it's on High Dive, there's so many other hands in there. But now, High Dive being a part of Verve, now you can get Garo through Verve, which is actually very interesting. And some other older, interesting, like, mecha anime and stuff like that as well. You can not just get dub and sub, you can also, I believe, get subtitles in other languages. And as long as you can get, because I don't know if they'll, like, have different tiers. It's like, oh, you can't get this via High Dive if you get it through Verve or something. That would suck, to be fair. But... Yeah, I was looking at some. I was in the uh, the comment section of the forums, which the links to this article will be in the description box down below. But I was in the comment section, and people were talking about stuff like, "Oh, is this making <clears throat> anime too unaffordable, unattainable to the masses?" And even though I did say that it is better to work together, price wise, because they're picking up High Dive and Funimation is leaving. Funimation, from what I've heard, is six bucks a month, and mm. High Dive is five to eight a month. Originally, it was like four bucks, but I think now it might be closer to eight. But right. even then, if even if both were eight bucks, you're losing Funimation, <clears throat> but now you're gaining High Dive. Which, yes, if you were there just for Funimation, I understand that you're you know you're like oh I feel stuck. I feel like I'm yeah. yeah, of course. Um, but at the same time, though, with what you're gaining, it's this price wise, it's the exact same. Unless, of course, you were saying, no, 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 but it's the same, but I was only there for Funimation. Yeah. But again, then you drop Verve and you get Funimation. Right. So I feel like even, and also another thing too, even though I just said you do feel a bit more inclined to buy a subscription every month to watch your anime, in theory, you can wait the, till the end of the month. You know, yes, you wouldn't be in certain fan circles. Yes, it would be harder to talk about your, you know, favorite anime or your re currently running anime or something like that. I totally get it. But at the same time, you still can do that. There's nothing stopping you from doing that, you know? Just yeah. buying your Verve account or your Crunchyroll or your fun, uh, Funimation streaming or whatever it might be at the end of the month, watching four anime and going, all right, then I'll wait till a month and a half or something, you know? So I won't yeah. pay for it the next month, but I'll pay for it the next month and a half afterwards, and then you'd get another six episodes. You almost would be done with the entire run, depending on what kind of anime you're watching. Um, either way, though... I'll say this much, even though this is frustrating, this partnership ending, uh, even though we don't know what's going to happen with the future of Attack on Titan and My Hero Academia, even though, unless Funimation has the uh, full streaming license no matter what, 
I could imagine Crunchyroll could still go to the Japanese side of things and yeah. get them to, uh, again, unless they have the unlimited streaming rights, which can happen. It has happened before. Um, right. I, I don't know why people are freaking out about that necessarily. Now, yes, you could say no, but this specifically is a deal with Funimation. It's like, yes, but if the deal goes through and you can still go to the Japanese company over the rights, okay, yeah. then just do that. It'll still be money, right, that you have to pay again. Uh, if Crunchyroll paid Funimation for the rights to, to work on this and have this on their platform. But for all we know, it could have just been a thing where maybe they worked together, maybe they gave them the ad revenue, uh, like Funimation, and yeah. now they're like, oh, now I have to pay a licensing fee, right? I don't know. I, I don't even know if Funimation is allowed to sub-license any of their stuff. Right. I have no idea if that's allowed, right? If it's allowed that they can tell Crunchyroll, hey, you want to tack on Titan from us directly because you can't get it from Japan for some reason, you want to get it from us directly, you have to pay X amount. I don't know if they're allowed to do that. They're allowed to do that for TV, but I don't know how that has anything to do with internet streaming. Yeah. So either way, uh, yeah, it's, it's better to stick together, uh, just price-wise, and also because, again, I don't, I don't know, I just don't feel like we are large enough as a fan base, to have them duke it out and then not have a huge effect on how everyone gets anime. Like, yeah. I don't, like, the best case scenario, I would argue, is if one side wins over the other and cripples them, they then buy them out. Mm -hmm. And even though there are, there would be a loss of jobs, which would be terrible, the catalogs are acquired. Right. That could happen, of course, that does happen all the time. But in different, you know, uh, different types of companies, some media, some not. But at the same time, I do wonder if it would affect things and how badly it would affect things. Yeah. Um, and, and so that's that's the one thing that I'll say as well. Um, I want to see if there's anything else that I want to mention. Um, oh, Funimation confirmed that they will be uh, regularly offering subtitled simulcasts beginning as early as winter 2019. That, like, that season of anime. Right. And free users will be able to watch the subtitled versions of several hundred shows, but Funimation will not relaunch its subtitle-only subscription tier. I assume because they're like, we, we need to make money. So yeah. it would be better to make money via both rather than have it separate. Because I'm sure right. it might be more work on their servers or something like that. And in addition, Funimation said that it expects several hundred subtitled shows to launch soon on Funimation Now in the UK, Ireland, Australia, and New Zealand. Funimation also hopes to offer its streaming service in non-English languages in the future. Uh, one thing I want to mention as well, and one thing that is... I guess you could say this is a potential good thing, perhaps? I don't know, perhaps? Um, Funimation, people have been talking about in the forums that Funimation is not, that they don't have really, um, good QC for their streaming service. Mm -hmm. And so they're not really big fans of streaming service. So hopefully, perhaps, due to this split, now that Funimation is on its own, they're like, oh, we gotta work on ourselves. Yeah. We have to do some s home care, some self-improvement, you know? Hopefully. Yeah, just go out on a jog every day, you know, eat <laughs> healthier, right? That's what you do post-breakups, right? You gotta work on yourself. Uh, so I do wonder if all jokes aside, Funimation will be doing that because I th do wonder if maybe them working together, it just caused just like a real relationship, potentially some complacency. Again, I've never used Funimation now, but from hearing people saying that it wasn't that good or they didn't like certain things about it, now that Funimation's on their own, they would have to work on that. Yeah. Uh, and thankfully, Crunchyroll is switching away from Flash. So that's good, too. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, switching away from Flash, going to HTML5. That was something that we were supposed to talk about, but I never got the chance to. Uh, basically, they're updating their, their player because nobody likes Flash. Yeah, that's and they're But they're updating it not because nobody likes Flash. They're updating it due to the fact that it's not going to be uh, updated. Like, Adobe Flash will be dead, legit, by 2020. Or oh, 2019. Wow. Okay. So, I mean, it'll still exist, of course, but like, it won't be updated by Adobe. So they're like, oh, we should... Switch. Yeah. So, so they're going to be get switching. On that. They and they do and they are. So either way, that's good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, that's good. So both sides are fixing themselves up for the future, uh, which, is, which is a good thing. Yeah, it is, it is, it is. But either way, I want to know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Do you think this is a good idea, bad idea? Um, yeah, well, how does this make you feel? You know, does it make you feel like you want to just maybe stop going on streaming services, go directly to digital? Because Crunchyroll could lose some, well not could, they will lose some shows digitally that Funimation was, was working with them. So, 
yeah, I want to know what you guys think about that down mm -hmm. below.